Welcome to Acorn to Oak with Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Within each acorn, there is the DNA that strives to be a mighty oak tree. All it needs to reach its potential for greatness is to be activated. You are the acorn. On this show, we will share with you the tools and guidance you need to grow into the person you are meant to be. And now your host, Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Hi, 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 everybody. It's uh, it's Penny, it's Penny, and Matthew. Good evening, it's Matthew. We also have a guest with us this evening, and it's and that's Jill Peg. So hi, Jill. So hi, Jill. Not too short. Hi, Jill. Can you hear us? Oh, well, okay. Well, we'll keep on going, and hopefully Jill, <laughs> Jill will join us at some stage. Jill will join us at some stage. <laughs> so, anyway, hello, good hello, evening. Anyway, hello, good evening. I've just been racing across the forest to get back in time <laughs> to do the show, so uh, it, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. And we're uh, Good evening, about, everyone, from myself. Um, we're a bit out of sync, I think, but um, we're talking about homeopathy tonight. But uh, what I'd like to do is just hand over to Matthew, because he was telling us a story last week and he didn't quite get to finish it. So, Matthew. Right. Thank you, Penny. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, there's definitely some time overlap here, so uh, a bit of few issues with that. But yeah, just wanted to get back and uh, finish a story which was very impactful on the course that we did. Um, and I think a lot of both the men and women get such good, such huge learning when we when we understand the other the other sex and how they work. And it was the whole um, why are why are men obsessed with sex? Um, it's all they think about and they don't consider anything else. And as a man, I, I, I totally get that. And I agree with women. Yes, we're very one track minded. And if we have one thing on our mind, it can seem like we're obsessed with it. However, we are much deeper than that. Um, but the conversation started and, and that was the basis of it. And the, what the women were sort of saying is, why don't men get we you go out for a nice romantic meal and and it's supposed to be about sort of being together and being a team. And then all the man wants to do when you get back is go up to the bedroom. And the women said, of course, that's what we want to do as well. However, what the men aren't considering is we've got lunch boxes to make for the morning. I've got a shopping list to do and various other bits. So whereas the man's thinking, excellent, great, let's go upstairs for some pudding. The woman's thinking about five jobs, which the man hadn't even considered. And the realisation for the guys when the women owned that was, I'm not surprised women think we're obsessed and can get upset with us for it, because it hadn't even entered our consciousness. And it's not that we are not caring or considerate or anything like that. It's just, just we work differently. And my response to one of the ladies was, I guarantee if you had the discussion in the taxi or the limo or whatever it is you're traveling home in that evening um, around, right, we've got five jobs to do. I guarantee the man will have three done before you have the other two done. If we know the goal and we know that the, it's not about the goal, but if, if, if we have that sort of aim that we can we can help our partner and support them and also end up having more time for what we really want to do that men are we like solutions we like to to know that we're helping so actually it's way more rewarding for a guy but without that communication and and, and that conversation we wouldn't have got the learning and it was it, it was huge learning for myself and it was one of those where you sit back and it's like whoa 
I really didn't know that that's what they were thinking. And now I know that, I totally understand why they're not feeling how we're feeling at that time. And if you know that and you can work together, you both ultimately get the goal that you, you wanted sooner. So why wouldn't you work together? And I, and I think from the women's point of view, they, they were really surprised. And it's like, oh, what, you mean you wouldn't mind if I asked you to three, do three jobs? And it's like, no, of course not, because it means I get to spend more time with you this evening. So why wouldn't I? And it's this assuming, oh, I assume he doesn't want to help and this, that and the other and the assumptions from the male point of view. So, yeah, I just wanted to finish that story and share it because it, it was a real piece of gold for myself when we had that conversation. It, it really helps you to understand why, um, why we don't necessarily understand the other, the other sex and how when we do, we can work with it. Okay, so, so well, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. And um, thank you for sharing that because it is a remarkable story. And it gets us quite nicely on to what we're talking about this evening, which is yes, um, homeopathy. <laughs> so, um, homeopathy. Um, and how incredible it is as a as a healing tool. Um, I um, I trained as a homeopath probably about thirty years ago now. And if Jill was here, she would basically be saying, "Oh no, I haven't known you that long." Um, Matthew, turn your microphone down some. Okay. So is that better? It's, we're just sorting out some technical stuff, but I'm sure we'll continue. <laughs> and it's just basically um, realizing that um, homeopathy is such a fantastic energy tool. And it can be really helpful to um, help us uh, stop actually needing to take chemical or over-the-counter medication um, and allows our body to get back to full health. Um, so, as I said, I trained as a homeopath um, about 30 years ago. So I have a lot of anecdotal stories and case studies. And it is quite uh, an amazing um, uh, therapy. Um, I know when I was beginning to train, uh, I, I obviously I trained first in orthodox medicine and um, basically didn't um, trust homeopathic remedies for the first year or so because the actual homeopathic remedies are given in such small doses. Uh, I just thought that there's no way these are going to work. But actually, as I built up confidence whilst I was a student, and I started taking homeopathic remedies. I couldn't believe the results that you got with such a small amount of um, uh, potentized remedy. And it's, it's really important to understand homeopathy and realize that it is with the dilution and the potentization, which is a process where you energize the, uh, the remedy content, which makes it into an energy medicine that actually makes it so effective. And it was, um, I know in the write-up uh, I did for this evening's talk, I talked about it, you know, far, it's not a new age medicine. It's been around for, you know, 2,000 odd years in different forms. But it was Samuel Hahnemann who um, brought it into an effective system or usable uh, system of medicine in the 1800s. And he basically um, would test most of the remedies that he was using either on himself or uh, another well person to actually get uh, what we call our materia medica which he tells us about all of the different remedies and what they're good with treating 
And if you've ever taken, you know, one of the things I can remember uh, talking to Matthew about was just try, try out a couple of things. And one of the things that I told him about was if you actually burn yourself, of uh, maybe taking a pan out of the, the oven or whatever it is, and you actually put uh, your your finger or whatever part of your body that you've burnt under, uh, under warm or, or as hot a water as you can, what actually happens is you take the heat out of it because uh, homeopathy is um, basically based on the law of similars. So if you put it under warm or hot water, you will take the heat out of the burn and it will not, um, it will take the pain away. It, the, the burn will not blister and it will actually heal. The actual burn will heal very, very quickly. And um, I asked him to try it out. So, Matthew, do you, do you want to tell them about your story? Yeah, I mean, I, I literally, I couldn't believe it. Um, being, being an ex-builder, there's lots of situations on site where there's hot things around um, and you can get burned. So over the years, I've had many, many burns and, like you said, chip, chip frying pans, all sorts of things. And the first thing we were always told as children is put it under a cold tap straight away. The best thing you can do. Now, so I was very sceptical at first. Um, however, I trust Penny's expertise. So if Penny says, try it, I'll try it once. Um, and I literally could not believe it. Um, I had no blistering. There was no pain. It it was like, what is this wizardry? Um, using something hot on thing hot to heal it. It, it. it didn't make sense in my brain, but it works. I I couldn't believe it. The, the pain, of, there's a slight pain running it under the hot water after you've initially burnt it. So it can feel as though maybe the pain has intensified only very slightly. However, it healed far quicker, um, very much like Penny said, there was no blistering. And the blistering is probably the most painful part about a burn. And it actually, it, it, it doesn't, it takes heal longer to heal. So I, I was I was blown away um, by this. I've had a, a bit of experience with any med, energy medicine, um, but not with the homeopathy side. So the, the concept of using similars was it just, just didn't make sense to me um and but when you see the results it, it, you just cannot argue with it um and i've used a, a few other um homeopathy medicines with with penny which, which again um blown me away that something you can put energy in and a vibration into um can can replace what what we would go to the doctor and sort of get a chemical medicine for um, and you just think, well, why, why isn't it? Why doesn't everybody use it? This is a, this is a natural medicine with, with that doesn't use chemicals, and we're choosing to use something else. Um, I haven't taken chemical medicine in probably ten, fifteen years um, because I don't need it. Um, and there's always a natural equivalent. Um, and it surprises me that we automatically go for the thing that's uh, a chemical. It is, it is. Uh, but again, you know, as I was saying earlier on, I was brought up as a scientist. So, you know, the law of symbols to me just blew my mind. I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, uh, I couldn't get my head around it for the first year. It took me a year of uh, <laughs> studying to actually get my head around it <laughs> and actually throwing the, the orthodox rule book out of the window. And, um, you know, it, it is most effective. And, you know, one of the, um, I would say, the big methodologies that we use at Acorn to Oak is, um, you know, the models of um, health, disease and cure. 
and the one a homeopath in again in the 1800s um a chap called Han, uh, herring actually came up with herring's law of cure which actually talks about how disease will leave the body so he says you know if you give energy medicine obviously he's talking about homeopathy it will move from the most vital organ to a lesser organ and then it will move from the inside of the body to the outside of the body and the outside of the body. So it may turn into a, 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 a you know, the, the skin disease or eczema or something like that, that has you had as a child. And then it will leave the body from the head to the feet. And it's one of the most astonishing things to watch as a practicing homeopath when you're treating somebody. And they've, they've gone, they're going through the law of cure and they get what we call a return of symptoms. And the last thing, uh, you know, on the outside of the body, they, they get uh, maybe patches of dry skin or, the, you know, the, the eczema they had as a child has come back and it leaves the body and it literally goes down the body you know, from the head and you can practically, you can see it moving down. It's like you've got a ruler and it's going down the body and it will eventually leave the body via the feet. And it is the most astonishing thing to see. And, you know, I still, when I'm treating um, a skin disease like that, I still get an absolute thrill watching it going down somebody's body because obviously as a homeopath I'm seeing every somebody once a month or once every couple of weeks whilst they're going through this process and it is astonishing to watch um you know um and and that is the power of homeopathy I mean homeopathy to me uh still after 30 years of being in practice, can knock my socks off. It, it really, really does. Um, you know, even, you know, um, we, a lot of homeopaths will talk to you about, oh, uh, you know, uh, first aid and home prescribing, um, which obviously anybody can do, um, you know, as long as you understand how homeopathy works. And you can get great homeopathic uh, first aid kits. Um, in the UK, we get it from Helios. I'm sure you have a, uh, uh, you know, different homeopathic uh, pharmacies in uh, in America as well. And they, you know, it, they usually give you sort of 36 remedies, which are for uh, general complaints, you know, um, things like bee stings or sun, sunburn or, you know, headaches, um, also covering, you know, uh, chronic fears, maybe, you know, people take uh, arnica and aconite if they're, they're getting a flight. I, uh, both Matthew and I flew to the States earlier on in the year. And I was taking, I took Arnica and Aconite to help. We'll be back after the break. We'll see you after the break. Conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. I Om FM. Namaste, friends. This is David Pramala Mitten. And we want to let you know that we will be in America and Canada this May. We'll be coming with our Wings of Mantra World Tour, coming up the West Coast to Boulder, Santa Fe, Sedona, Scottsdale, Santa Barbara, L.A., Marin, Santa Cruz, San Jose, Escondido, Edmonds, and up to Canada to Victoria and Vancouver. You can find details on our website, davidpramalmiten.com. Hope to see you there. Lots of love. Namaste. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. 
Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Okay, so we're back. Um, I've just had a quick message from Jill, and unfortunately, she's had a few technical problems, and we haven't been able to get her on the show tonight, but we will organize something for later on in the year. Um, And she just says hi and hello to everybody. So getting back to homeopathy, you know, um, one of the most amazing things about homeopathy is, as I was talking about the, the homeopathy, first aid kits is that you can learn how to um you know you can look up this the great thing is googling all sorts of different stuff but there's a lot of different things that you can take for headaches and hay fever you know problems with teething i know i went through this with my son and the, the famous homeopathic remedy for teething is uh chamomilla which is you know you can actually get in you know from in the UK, you can get it from Boots and it comes in teething powder and you can just put it on the teeth and that will help uh, the baby um, uh, through the, the pain of teething. It also helps with, you know, mental, emotional problems, you know, such as jealousy, lack of confidence, depression, panic attacks. Uh, it can also help. Um, I treat a, a lot of children obviously being a mom myself, um, and looking at, you know, um, attention deficit disorders. And um, also, you know, when children get stuck with uh, behavioural problems, um, homeopathy is the real gentle way of helping them cope with that and coping with any transitions in their life. And it, you know, homeopathy, as I was saying, is such an amazing tool. You know, it's something that, you know, I would reach for. I would reach for my homeopathic kit uh, rather than taking any chemical um, uh, drugs right here, right now. However, having said that, you know, sometimes chemical drugs can be very helpful. And, you know, obviously, as uh, an ex-nurse, you know, I'm very, um, I have a lot of respect for doctors and GPs uh, and people like this who are, you know, obviously empathetic and can help with lots of different problems. And if someone broke their leg, um, yes, homeopathy can help and support them, but you do need to go to a hospital to go and get it x-rayed and set in the right place <laughs> so that, you know, obviously you're not, you're not trying to just cure it with, uh, with homeopathy. It is important, obviously, to um, have a physician uh, if, if you do have an accident or something that way. However, when I was working in intensive care um, later on in my career, um, 
uh, we had a fantastic anaesthetist who who was the in charge of the intensive care and he would always say to me you know if someone wasn't getting better he would say to me penny what about that wing what about some of that wing of bat or you know eye of toad he was obviously <laughs> taking the mickey out of me being a homeopath um and he was astonished at some of the results you know obviously they were they were having chemical drugs as well and it's really important to realize that if you need to take chemical drugs then take them but you can take homeopathy to help and support too you know, one of the other areas that I've worked in in my life is with, you know, with cancer patients and homeopathy can really help, um, help and support people who are having to go through um, either radiation or chemotherapy. It can really help to um, keep their, their um, mental state and their emotional state very, very uh, stable whilst they going through some of these you know big pathologies as well as helping um you know to put them into the law of cure and start reversing some big pathology and it has been pretty astonishing and i i just wanted to talk about one case which always su really surprised me that um i had a a, a client or a patient who came to me um with really bad phlebitis which is inflammation of the legs and uh, really getting into their lymphatics and they were getting to the stage where it was actually uh, going deeper and affecting their breathing and they had pulmonary edema and their other bits and pieces and they came to me and asked actually asked um you know is there something you could do and I, I started to see them on a weekly basis and we managed to uh, help all of the signs and symptoms and kick them into the law of cure. And what we actually found was it was because of this person had been overseas and had been bitten by a beetle and eventually the bite site, the bite uh, site became apparent and we actually got the we actually managed to extract um i i think it was an, uh, some type of um a bug or something that was actually put in there and then the whole case managed to sort itself out it took about 3 or 4 months for all of this to happen but it was really really impressive the way homeopathy helped this person and helped them turn this around and so you know you as i said i'm always incredibly uh, impressed with homeopathy and how it works so i'm just going to hand hmm. back over to matthew and see if he wants to add anything at this stage yeah well uh, again as you've been speaking another uh, situation uh, sort of came up that i remember uh, i think it was the beginning of the year um had an abscess um come up um in my mouth and i rang the dentist and i think the nearest appointment i could get was something like two weeks and I happened to speak to penny that morning and i said is there anything anything i can take homeopathy that that would help um and I think we started with some, was it Arnica and then Silica? Um, yeah. But within a few days, the, the thing's gone down and gone away. Um, it's, I know I've had abscess before and I'm sure many people will agree. There's no pain like tooth pain um, because it, it's in your head and you just can't get rid of it. And yeah, um, within... A few hours it had gone down to the point where it wasn't throbbing, it wasn't hurting, and then within a few days it completely disappeared. So, another situation where I the proofs in the pudding, you, it, it's like the results you can't argue with. I I had an infection come up in my mouth. Without treatment, an effect in an infection isn't just going to go away. The only thing I did different, or the only thing I took, is homeopathy and that sorted it I, I didn't take any other chemical drugs and so again it was kind of like 
wow, well that that really does work. And for me, I've I've had abscess before and taken chemical medicine, and it's taken a lot longer to to go down and heal and and that sort of thing. So um, my my betting's on that. Um, but I'd also this is going to end with a question to Penny because I'd like to share with um, a few people out there. That, um, obviously, I'm a breathwork practitioner, but with a lot of pathologies that my clients are dealing with, um, I consult Penny on. Um, it's a bit of a dream team situation because <laughs> with people working with specific pathologies, having Penny's background knowledge is is just priceless. Um, so my question to Penny is, is, what did you do? But just to explain the situation first, I've had a client who's been working with me for about eight months and something that's really, really affected her sessions with me, um, especially Reiki, is she has a lot of twitches, a lot of almost like mini mini seizures. And I've I've always got it from a practitioner point of view that it's energetic. So I haven't it hasn't affected any of the, the work we've done. In, in fact, she's done a huge amount of work. But last week, I gave her her first um, Reiki treatment and breathwork session where she didn't have any twitches. So my question to Penny is, what did you do? Because, wow, what a difference. Um, <laughs> but from her point of view, the relief that she could lay back and actually enjoy a session that's supposed to be relaxing, i.e. the Reiki, Whereas before, every few seconds she's twitching, so it's taken her attention away. And it became very frustrating for her. So obviously the work Penny's done with her on the homeopathy side, my God, what a difference. It is really, it's really incredible. It is incredible. And when you obviously as a homeopath, when I uh, do a homeopathic consultation, uh, a homeopath spends anything from, you know, an hour and a half, to two hours talking to somebody and going through their whole, you know, uh, medical history uh, right the way back to you know what how they what their birth was was like and everything else so energetically we do a timeline of um of what's been going on in that person's life uh and then we look at it and we 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 look for a a, a remedy that has a similar picture of to what somebody has been describing so if somebody was we were talking about um arthritis you know we're looking for you know when when when's it painful uh, is it painful first thing in the morning is it better walking is it worse walking uh, you know some people find that um you know it is better walking uh, or you know it's a you know, better warmth or it's better cold you know even each person's uh, pathology is very unique to themselves so there isn't a homeopathic remedy for specific one specific thing so mm -hmm. um, you know somebody may well be in the arnica state so we'll talk about the arnica state the arnica state is feeling bruised battered bruised it may be for trauma it's a big trauma remedy but it's also with arnica it's very much the person doesn't want to be touched they don't want people near them you know uh, they actually want to be left alone so they have all of that in the picture as well so if somebody is you know say you know in an accident and they're, they're lying there very quietly and basically actually wince when someone approaches them because they don't want anybody to touch them that's an arnica state uh, I was talking about aconite, something that I was I, I took uh, to help me over the, the, the flying. And um, the uh, the aconite state is very acute. It's a very acute remedy. It's a, when people think they're about to die. It's a great remedy to give people who are thinking they're going to have a heart attack. You know, or they are having a heart attack because it's, mm -hmm. you know, they, 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 they're going to die and they're going to die now. It's, you know, it's, and, that, and that's the that's the thing. So it's very very good for people who have fear of flying. 
because they think they're going to, you know, they don't like getting on the aircraft and they think they're going to die now. So uh, that, that's why it is indicated for people who have, suffer from fear of flying. But, um, you know, also, the, you know, uh, there's a remedy called, uh, we talk about arthritis, rust tox, which is actually better movement. Um, they like to, uh, you know, sit up, uh, they like to get moving. Where, whereas another remedy called Ruta is for when we overuse muscles. So my husband loves Ruta because he plays football a lot. So he actually takes Ruta after he's had a real heavy game playing, uh, again, soccer, not football, soccer. So, you know, there's many different remedies to be, that can be used for many different situations. Um, Matthew mentioned a remedy called silica. And silica is known as the homeopathic surgeon. So he he took it because he'd got an abscess. So the abscess, unfortunately, is really painful because it doesn't have a vent to vent the pus. So if you give silica, what will happen is the the natural body's response will find a vent so it will let out the pus or or the the trapped abscess and it will naturally sort itself out so all of these homeopathic remedies we learn homeopathic remedies like characters in the book so we learn uh, what they're good for, you know, when when their aggravation time is. So it may be uh, somebody wakes up and they have night terrors. So it may be something that we can give them to help them with those night terrors and and how they feel. Do they wake up? You know, homeopathy again is brilliant for people who are going through menopause because you know if they wake up at three o'clock in the uh, uh in the morning with night sweats and feeling um uh oppressed uh feeling maybe you know that 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 the, 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 they have difficulty breathing and they're hot and they've got to change the bed clothes you know there's a homeopathic remedy which will help them through that um, you were talking about this particular case of yours. Um, you know, she was very uh, twitchy and very uh, and I gave a remedy um, that was really indicated for that, and that's what helped her relax. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's so fantastic. Moving into a break now. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, 
We know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter. Yet, you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Okay, so we're back. Um, you know, one of the things that I think um, what I love is is talking about obviously homeopathy, and uh, uh, is a fantastic way of helping you and supporting you in your daily life. You know, things happen. Life happens. You know, we, we could be walking down the road. We could uh, have an accident, or um, or we could just be going through uh, a life experience which we're finding quite stressful and quite difficult and this is where homeopathy comes into its own um you know one of the reasons i think i was drawn to to train as a homeopath was because it had remedies and i could understand you know people giving somebody a, a remedy to help them in in their life uh, at that time but you know one of the things is is life always throws us curveballs and it threw me a big curveball about three years ago um, I'd been training um, training uh, all day with uh, uh, the, the team and uh, I didn't feel very well. I thought I'd got flu. I'd been taking some homeopathic remedies, but it wasn't shifting. And um, to cut a very long story short, um, by, by four o'clock, I knew I was in trouble. And um, my husband was coming to pick me up. Um, and he just took one look at my face and went, you need to go to the hospital now. And as I walked into the hospital, um, within about five minutes, I had collapsed. My, my blood pressure was 265 uh, over a hundred and something or other, and I had a, a, a cascade stroke. So I had a, a, a cerebral vascular accident. And at that stage, and I'll talk about this another time, uh, went, uh, had a bit, had a near death experience and my husband was on the phone and got in touch with another friend of mine, um, uh, Yvonne Stone, who is a fantastic homeopath, and she was pretty much on site uh, reasonably quickly. And from that minute, I was taking homeopathy. Uh, I was paralysed down my right side. I lost my speech. Um, you know, I had no movement in my arm, no movement in my right leg, uh, and was in a bit of a state. Within 24 hours, I was walking again uh, with taking homeopathy every 10 minutes and I was walking again. Within two days, I had my speech back. Within five days, I was discharged from hospital. Uh, obviously, it took me a while to recover because uh, a lot of my brain was actually affected. So it was about taking the homeopathy, getting in and doing physio, doing cognitive um, therapy and starting to rewire my brain. But I was back at work within six months. Um, and, you know, when I'm talking about work, I'm, I run a training organization uh, called Acon to Oak, which you've heard, and went on from strength to strength and rebuilt everything that I needed to do. And that is the power of homeopathy. Now, so when we talk about deep seated pathology, we're talking about helping you know, people with cancers, having had strokes. Everything can be reversed with a, an energy medicine and homeopathy obviously we're talking about that tonight is one of the things i have greatest respect for so uh as i said you know it is an amazing uh, uh 
healing system which can help with the plethora of things and as i said you can uh, i'm sure you can google you can come to acorn to wait we run first aid and home prescribing courses um you know you can uh, book an appointment with me by right by skype if you so wish but also just google homeopathy and start to learn what can help you uh, so you don't need to take uh, a load of chemical drugs which are not helping you um so it's it's really interesting system and if nothing else you, you take away from tonight um is just go out there and do some research and explore yourself i'm sure you're very very capable of doing that so handing back to matthew for him to um say anything that he wishes to say yeah um just just to re uh to say the point again that all pathology is reversible um, and I think as and if we were told when we were younger and given more opportunity to investigate it I don't think a lot of us in adult life would attract as many pathologies as we do um, when you're told that oh well you get ill and that just is that's just life and you go to the doctor and you get some drugs and that fixes it um that's what you do what you don't realize is that the drug may fit the symptom but it may may not be dealing with the root cause so if you're not dealing with the root cause it may come back on obviously herring's law of cure it, it as penny explained earlier a pathology could be suppressed with chemical medicine and go deeper into the body and come out as a, a more serious pathology um, but yeah, I think it's really important to realise that that can be reversed. If, it, if, if something can be manifested within the body, it, it, it can be reversed. Um, and I think one of the one of the things that sticks out for me is homeopathy is such a. I, again, I wouldn't poo poo medical um, like chemical drugs because they are very good for certain things. However, the, with homeopathy, there aren't there's not side effects that come with taking the medicine because it's you're effectively making a bespoke medicine for that person you don't have the side effects and I'm sure a lot of the Americans listening will resonate um, obviously went to America recently I spent a few weeks in Jamaica a couple of years ago and catching TV the TV adverts you guys have I, I literally could not believe some of the adverts I watched because um, I happened to meet so, some nurses as well. And the, 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 the attitude to, oh, I've got a headache. Oh, that's all right. I've got a pill for that. Oh, I've got this. Oh, I've got a pill for that. Oh, I've got a pill. It's like you've got a pill for everything. And the thing that blew me away was the fact that they were advertising this drug on TV that had one good thing about it it would take away your headache or it would take away what one small pathology maybe a, a small skin infection or something but the amount of side effects i mean 90 percent of the advert was playing the side effects not that what the drug did and that's the thing that really struck me with homeopathy is the, you don't have the side effects and as human beings, we're, it's like we're signing up for the thing that could cause depression. I mean, it's like you're taking you're taking a tablet to deal with, uh, I don't know, a, a sore throat or, or a headache. And you read the package and it could cause suicidal tendencies. And it's like, Christ, I think I'd rather have a headache, thank you very much. <laughs> um, and it really, really shocked me. I mean, we, we don't necessarily have so many adverts on the TV as the Americans do, but every other advert is is a drug advert and it was the amount of side effects that i could not believe because if that if, if even i got one of the side effects i wouldn't take it i'd rather keep, keep the headache for a few hours and drink drink some more water um so that that's for me what really comes up around that is that this is a it's a, a very non-evasive form of of, of medicating um, whereas with other medications that there is always that 
side effect. And don't get me wrong, more often than not, I, I, I get the result can outweigh the side effects. But it's just surprising how many there are and that we willingly shove them in our bodies. It's it's really, I think it's really important to, um, for me, I, I think, to, to encourage people to just do some research before mm. they start taking chemical drugs and, and just go, do I actually need to take this or not? Um, you know, obviously, if it's something that is helping you live, a, uh, you know, um, a better life, uh, you have a better quality of life, then that, that's that's perfectly okay. And, you know, everybody sure. is unique and everybody is going to uh, make their own choices. Uh, you know, for me, it's very much encouraging people to do the research and make a really good choice. And if it's basically you feel that, you know, I need to take this because it's saving my life, i.e., you know, obviously after to people who've had strokes, some are actually put on blood thinners for a while. You know, I would say, you know, you need to take that uh, until everything settles down, until you, until at least six months after uh, a stroke, and then make a, a, a rational choice uh, with your physician's help or, you know, with a homeopath, homeopath um, input or whatever it is. Um, and, you know, still, Obviously, three years post stroke, I still go and see um, my neurologist. Um, we don't spend an awful lot of time together, but you know, I do see him just to make sure that things are tickety boo and moving along the right way. And I think it would be silly not to. But you know, mm -hmm. I also obviously take homeopathy, um, not on a daily basis, but when I need it, um, just to make sure that my body is in homeostasis and obviously homeostasis is health. So it's really important to just look at the different choices. And, you know, sometimes when we've been told something time and time again, and, you know, especially by an authority figure, we think that that's the way it should be. It's, it's not. It's a, you are the most magnificent energy beings who've got amazing intelligence and just don't allow yourself to be pushed into something that doesn't feel right for you. And that, you know, is very much where I come from. Um, homeopathy, if you haven't tried it, you know, try it for your next headache. You know, try and uh, try and, uh, you know, pick something that's going to help and support you, which is an energetic medicine rather than a chemical. And, you know, as I said, try out the thing next time you burn your finger on the stove, you know, put it under warm water uh, or hot water and see how quickly it heals. You know, again, I'm a big... Uh, you know, person who encourages people to use their own lives as the experiment. You know, you can experiment on on the hot water and the burn. You know, you can you can look at um, t again. You know, a great one. For, you know, for if you've got a, a jippy stomach. You know, take, take rhubarb because that will help. And there's all sorts of natural alternatives. And that's what we're wanting. Both Matthew and I are hoping that you will gain from this week's show is realizing you don't have to go down the orthodox route. You can look at complementary therapies. You can look at homeopathy. You can look at Reiki. You can look at all sorts of different avenues. So that that's my advice anyway. So um, I'll hand over to Matthew and see what yeah. advice he's got in the next two minutes. <laughs> yeah, very much so. I'm a, a very, very scientific sort of, I, I like the sciency approach. And I've ne never been one to... To, to take advice greatly I'll always do my own little experiments around it so very much I mean I'm a Reiki master teacher now before I started doing Reiki and that sort of thing um, if you had said about channeling energy my only reference would have been Bruce Lee um, but when I when I, I learned about it and then 
realised just the the effects that it can can have on you. I mean, it improves your daily life. You can you can use it to heal yourself. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a great relaxing treatment as well. But if, if I hadn't have tried it, I, I never would have known. And that's one thing I, I, I love about my personality is if someone says, oh, no, that doesn't work, I'll try it to see if it does work. Because it may not work for them, but it may work for you. So, yeah, look into the natural sort of equivalents. Um because I think a, a lot of them are, are very, very fast and effective treatments and without the side effects. And yeah, it's just, it, it's exploring. It's having, having fun with it, with, with this life we call, uh, or with life. Um, it's a game. We've got a, a plethora of experiences and different medicines and that we can use. So just because we've grown up in the chemical, sort of a hundred years of chemical medicine, it doesn't mean we need to stick to it. Um, and I think some of the stuff we've, we've sort of lost the knowledge a little bit. Um, <coughs> and chemical medicine, we see it as, as modern medicine and therefore assume it's the most effective. Because and modern um, means new. Unfortunately, it's, uh, in a lot of cases, it's not. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're, we're heading very quickly uh, to the end of the show. So wishing you a good week and we'll see you next time. Take care. Fantastic. Thank you very much for listening. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.